see a town. Or if another person says, from today I declare you husband and wife, and then two people stay together and create a family. Mm. But there are other mm, aspects how power, how uh, sound has power. It was perhaps uh, at the end of the 18th century where one mm, scientist, he was from Germany, uh, Mr. Klatney, uh, saw something which totally surprised him. He put some sound on a plate where he had arranged sand, you know, he has put sand on the plate. So when he put the sound there from, from underneath the plate, the sand started to move. Don't, don't worry, it doesn't get ghostly here. <laughs> and it formed patterns which you also find in nature. For instance, sometimes it formed these stripes like you see on the zebra. At other times, uh, with other sound, the sand organized itself uh, into the patterns which you find in flowers. Uh, still at other times, uh, he could see that the sound was rearranging the sand on the plate uh, so that it looked uh, like the patterns on the back of uh, tortoises, Schildkröten. So from there, after doing many, many experiments, he understood that sound or vibration, you could say, is the organizing principle behind uh, 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 the material manifestation. Sound vibration that moves through space, in other words, is responsible for the galaxies, uh, for forests and rivers, and, and everything else in between. Uh, I have a friend who is himself a scientist, Martin Fleming, who decided to make his own quite unconventional experiments on the power of sound. He cooked a pot of rice and then spooned the rice into two bowls. One bowl he labeled thank you and the other bowl Schüssel, he labeled fool. So these two bowls were placed by him into a refrigerator and he took out these bowls every day and for one minute spoke to these bowls. To the bowl which he had labeled thank you, he said things like thank you for nourishing my family. Thank you for giving us food. Thank you, my dear eyes, for having grown and become one of the main foods of human beings. And thank you for coming into my refrigerator. So he said things like this. Then he put the bowl labeled thank you back into the refrigerator and took the second bowl labeled fool and said, you, you fool, you are not really worth the name rice. You have no, no part of, of, uh, of the organizing intelligence which we find in matter. You are, absolutely useless. So each single day for an, the duration of a week, he repeated his experiment. So the rice in the bowl, 
thank you, he said all kinds of nice things to the rice in the bowl, which he had labeled fool. He just insulted, uh, he insulted that part. He just said insults. After one week, he stopped. He put these two bowls in a special refrigerator and after three months, he took them out. Now, please listen, because this might come as a surprise. Maybe not entirely as a surprise. The bowl where he had said nice things, the thank you bowl, after three months had all the structure of rice uh, intact. It was, it was a rice bowl. The other bowl, uh, where he had said so many bad things, uh, had become a slimy sludge, also so a schleimiger Brei, sagt man in Deutsch, which was smelling, which had decomposed, is also richtig verrottet, verfault. Mm. Uh, and from that, he could understand that you have to be mindful of what kind of sound vibration you let into your life and you let into your system. Sound has the power to affect matter on the structuring level, where, where matter is structured. Uh, no. Yesterday I came back from Switzerland in an airplane which was much too cold and I developed a, 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 a cold and I woke up today with a headache and I really uh, could not imagine to come here because my whole body felt as if I had just crossed the Himalayas uh, and gone back, you know, it was so exhausted. Mm, I knew my lecture would be on the power of sound, so what I decided is I got up very early, I went into the forest, and I began to chant uh, for one and a half hours mantras. At the beginning there was no change in my well-being. I, I still feel, felt tired and uh, really worn out. But after perhaps half an hour, the effects started to show and I became visibly all right. And today and now where I'm sitting here before you, I still feel the echo of the disease, a little trace, but uh, it, it's gone. Because power, the power of sound is such that it can reorganize matter. And once again, I want to say, this means as a takeaway for you, be very attentive what sound you allow into your life. If you allow uh, uh, all kinds of mm, material sound vibrations and you don't even have to pay for it. It's there in the radiation and the vibrations that pervade the atmosphere by all the phone calls, the vi uh, what is the VLAN and the internet. If you are too much exposed to all these type of uh, material sound vibration which don't have an uh, encouraging and upbuilding contact, you uh, uh, will develop uh, first of all bad moods, but second of all even physical diseases. I don't want to go more here into the detail because I think you got the idea and there is a lot of if you are interested to research this, there's a lot of more, more of this in the in uh, in, 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 in studies uh, which are there. I remember when I talk about the power of sound, 
my spiritual master. He mm, was a spiritual teacher of very high realizations and he once went with his older disciples on a walk down to the banks of the, the Ganga and uh, his students uh, started to uh, talk about uh, the various, let us say, achievements in their projects. They wanted to inform him this farm community is going on very well. Um, this uh, school is doing well and so on. But after perhaps 15 minutes, they, have exhausted, they had exhausted their goods out and they started to complain about um, people with whom they work together. Oh, he is not on the same page or he always tries to bring himself into the center of everything and disturbs the community uh, which we try to build and so on. Finally, after talking like this, and all kinds of negative talk was there, everyone talked in, in the same vein, my spiritual master stopped. He used to walk with a cane, so he put the cane into the, cane into the ground and he looked around, mm. Uh, looking every single one of his students up. Then he said, All of you have come to complain. Only I have come to encourage. Wow, that's something heavy. When your spiritual teacher tells you, uh, Du bist eine Lamentier, Suse. Uh, you are just knowing how to lament and complain uh, and have no positive input. Uh, that's tough. But uh, that is what was going on. Everyone complained about this thing and that thing and that person, hoping that the spiritual teacher would give the solution. So they walked, continued to walk in silence after about I don't know, five or ten minutes, my spiritual master again, with some force, boom, put this cane into the ground and looked everyone up. And he said, all of you have come to complain. Only I have come to encourage. Uh, I was not personally there, but I heard it from my friend who was there. And I uh, could understand, yes, this is a principle. Mm, uh, weak sound, complaining sound, uh, mm, mm, lamenting sound, criticizing uh, sound weakens you. Uh, and believe it or not, this weak sound or this bad sound, or let, why say bad sound, this, this uh, you know, negative sound, it, it creates weak chemicals in the body. Strong sound creates strong hormones. A weak sound uh, co uh, 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 creates weak hormones. So, so be careful, I say it again. <laughs> Sound shapes matter. The words we use and the words or the sound, music, talks and everything we hear uh, has an enormous impact on us. So Bhakti takes this idea and uses it as perhaps the main transformative agency. Mm, uh, 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 let us look at mantras. This is not just a uh, good sound uh, like thank you or so on. This is a, a more spiritual sound that acts like a sound key that opens the door mm, to a perception of the self and of, of God. Uh, 
Mm. Let us look at the mantra which you all chanted uh, for a second time. Om. Om is phonetically, also so von der von dem von dem Klang her, uh, 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 spelled as A, U and M. Mm. The A symbolizes the waking consciousness and everything we see when we are awake. The U, uh, U symbolizes the dreaming consciousness, the world of our dreams, our secret dreams, our, <laughs> our wild dreams at times. And the M uh, represents the unconscious state. It is said that the whole world of uh, uh, which we perceive when we are awake, which we perceive when we are dreaming, and even that which is unconscious, which we are not aware of, all this is packed into the Om. And when you learn to chant the Om in the proper way, then your consciousness will connect uh, with the wakeful world, with the dream world of your dreams, but it will connect in a spiritual way. <laughs> uh, and that makes uh, uh, up all the difference. It will, it will unlock something, it will open something that is dreamt of. So how do we chant Uh, the Om then in that ancient traditional way. I want to do this with you. Uh, you have to uh, listen very carefully. It's very complex. I don't think many of us uh, are chanting like this. You place the syllable A into your heart. Ah, then you rise and transition in uh, the Uh, the sound A into an U as you come to the throat chakra. Aum. Then mm, you rise still a little bit more into your cerebral area. Also das hier was direkt unter der, wie sagt man das in Deutsch? Was? Schädeldecke, unter der Schädeldecke ist. And then, as you say this, you are, a, uh, uh, and, and then you enter with your consciousness into the silence which comes after Om. Let me do it one time alone, and then with every single one of you together, please. Mm. Place the symbol A in the heart, Transition as you rise to this uh, letter U and then go into a hum as you uh, bring your attention right here under the Schädeldecke, under this area, topmost area of the head. And then enjoy the silence. I will do it one time ago, uh, alone. Watch my hand, please. Five times together. <laughs> Enjoy the silence for a moment. Breathe in. the silence please and breathe in
breathe in last time. Ah. Now please sit for a moment in silence and let the sound resonate in you a little bit like the sound of a bell which when struck bing, begins to slowly fade away or die out actually it's easiest if we do it again and then sit in silence and just follow the sound of the ohm as it fades away während es davon eilt sozusagen Please do a deep inhale. Ah. Breathe normally and just sit in silence. Thank you very, very much. If you wish, you may now come out of your meditative silence. <laughs> Normally, no one wishes to come out. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sign. <laughs> so I believe you can see and you can also well imagine how this type of sound, if you chant it properly, will do something in your body and the mind. It will uh, subtly uh, reconstruct damaged cells and also damaged thoughts. Mm. The, the first effect of chanting mantras is that it just calms down the, the mental chatter, or we could call it the constant thought traffic. Gradually, as your uh, thoughts calm down, they will be exchanged with good vibrational thoughts, good vibrational patterns. Then the third level, which, we are, uh, which I will talk about in a second, happens. <coughs> That is that the sound vibration will act, so to say, as a lift that br <coughs> sorry that, that brings your awareness or your consciousness on an entirely different level of perception. And finally, and uh, we will do this together. Uh, thank you very much. It won't be theory. You will ex experience it in a moment. The power of sound helps to expand your awareness so that you begin to actually see, not think, uh, the interconnectedness of all life. You will see that we are, that we all share in one, how would you say, uh, uh, one space. We are different, of course, as 
our bodies. One is strong, one is weak, one is female, one is male. One has this color, another body has that color. Yes, there's a lot of difference. Yes, we are different in our mentalities and our aspirations and so on. Mm. Uh, uh, and there is difference. But as we enter into the powerful sound vibration, the spiritual sound vibration, we will uh, be able to, to not uh, see this uh, separatedness, but we will see the unity of all life. And I, I would like to give you an example. And this is an example from traditional scriptures. Um, there was once a criminal, uh, what a good idea to make a... Uh, yeah, and air also, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and water. <laughs> uh, there was once a, a, a murderer and a criminal. His name was Dasa Ratnaka. He used to stop people who came through that part of the forest, and he would, uh, how would you say, he would rob all kinds of things from them, and if they were not willing to depart from their <coughs> possessions, Dasaratnaka murdered people. Uh, I hear all the time someone is talking. Can I help uh, with something? I'm sorry. Uh, we will have a translation afterwards. But for for see, they brought all these machines. Uh, hello, <laughs> and uh, uh, so we, we we need to focus a little. Um, uh, uh, so uh, one day, and this was a turning point in Dasaratnaka's life. One day. A saint came down the, the path that of the, in the dark forest. He was playing his veena and he was singing. He was a great saint. His name is Narada Muni, those who know him. And Dasa Radnaka thought, well, sometimes these saints have jewels on them. So he jumped from, from, <laughs> the, the, from behind a tree and stopped him and said, give me everything you got even that, that cool instrument which you carry. <laughs> Narada Muni said, before I do that, I have a question for you. For whom are you doing all these cruel acts? Uh, so Dasaratnaka said, I have a large family and my parents are there. Uh, can you... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm maintaining my family. Some have mm, this profession, and they steal with their profession. I am an honest stealer. <laughs> I steal uh, like a robber. Okay, said uh, Narada Muni, that makes sense. But uh, uh, you know, for all the things which you do, you get karma. Would you please go to your family and your parents and asked if they are willing to share some of that karma. <laughs> not just the jewels, not just this and that, but some of the karma. Mm. So that's a Ratnaka. When I, I said, when I'm back, you are gone. <laughs> and, um, no, 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 I stay here. I give my word of honor. I wait for you and your answer. So that's a Ratnaka went back and he said, my family, you know, I maintain you with all my activities. I, I came to know today, I mean, I knew it, but I became attentive to this point, that I get bad karma for this. Uh, are you willing to take some of the bad karma? Oh, said his wife. <laughs> no, 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 no. I did not tell you to become a murderer. You chose it. I don't take any of your karma. He asked his children. He asked his parents. And they all said, no, we don't want, wish to have 
anything to do with the karma which you, uh, you make while doing this. So he came back and he said, oops, uh, I mean, I'm looking into a very, very bad future. Uh, and he told Narada Muni that I'm the only one who has to carry all these karmic, karmic things. Uh, uh, he said to Narada Muni, what should I do to become free from this karma? And uh, Narada Muni could understand this person was not ready for spiritual instruction. But he gave him a hidden mantra. He said, chant Mara, Mara, Mara. Mara means death. And perhaps the god of death will be happy with you that you have chanted his name and prayed to him and he will maybe absolve you from your karma. So I come back and see you after 50 years. So Dasaradnaka sat down and he started to chant Mara 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 Somehow in the chanting he exchanged the two syllables and after some time the different sequence Rama was much more appealing to him than Mara and he he chanted, he abs uh, absorbed his consciousness in it, in the sound. It is said that the sound created such a change in his entire being that he actually became a great saint who didn't even notice how ants were coming and building an anthill above him. He was there in the anthill Mara Rama 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 and as he chanted like this, he was, he was alone in the forest and alone in the anthill. He developed ecstatic symptoms of love. His consciousness expanded. He first felt very sorry for having killed so many people and uh, also animals, but uh, he went uh, far beyond this into an a state of absolute bliss. Finally, Narada Muni came. I said after 50 years, I think it was shorter, I think it was only five years. <laughs> Still a long time. Uh, and he saw that anthill from which um, the sound Rama, 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 Rama was coming and spreading through the forest. And <laughs> Narada Muni uh, uh, said, uh, uh, come out, come out from the anthill. And out of the anthill comes a personality who has a big beard, who is uh, very mm, slim, muscular, very healthy looking. And there was a glow in his eyes which showed that this person had uh, achieved enlightenment. So this is uh, the power of sound, my dear everyone, and the power of mantras. Therefore, in Bhakti Yoga, you have altogether five powerful processes which bring, uh, uh, bring about uh, transformation. One of them is, however, the preferred one. The five processes, just so that you know um, here at once, is it starts with association. Good association, positive association, association that uplifts and not pulls down. Uh, 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 association of those who are interested in Sat, in the eternal. Uh, then it uh, continues with listening to wisdom texts, going on pilgrimage, worshipping. But the most important is uh, chanting sacred mantras. So I want to do this now with all of you at the end. Mm, already you have uh, learned uh, mm, uh, uh, mm, uh, the, 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 the thing, the, uh, the, the Om Mantra. I want to introduce a very simple other mantra to you 
Ram. We just heard about it. I expect that all of you will be enlightened when you, we leave in 10 minutes this, this room. <laughs> Perhaps not. So this, this Ram syllable holds the key to unlocking this infinite spiritual potential, which was even there with this, uh, with this person. There are only three things you need to do. You need to set an intention in your mind that you want to, want to chant uh, and use this as a bridge to spiritual enlightenment. You need to bring some sincerity or the Aufrichtigkeit to the practice, where you understand I'm, I'm a small soul, a resident of this world who's mostly governed by my ego, by, by that false self, that phantom self, and I want to now break on through to the spiritual dimension, and then you need to have a little attention. You need to focus your attention. We will do this, don't worry. You, you don't need to remember anything at this time. I want to do this at the end, the, a meditation which is very, very powerful on the syllable Ram. Uh, I have to watch the... Oh, we are not so late. We, we are, in fact, still in time. But um, I, we have to finish it, uh, so I will do it a little bit uh, faster, but I will go to the most important things. May I ask all of you, have you ever seen a cathedral? Yes. You have seen. Uh, have you entered into a cathedral? Uh, yes, you find benches on the floor. Eine Kathedrale, glaube glaub ich. Ne? You find benches on the floor. Then you find a crystal chandelier, which is even nicer than this one. But I know in the other room is, is a very, very big chandelier. You find one, at least in my cathedral. And then you find a big dome. Yes, you with me? I just need to, you to have this imagery which will translate into the subtle energy circles when you do the practice. It will become very clear when you do this. So, okay. This will be serious meditation. Now, I request you to roll back your shoulders a little bit to open the chest volume. You can bring, the easiest is you bring your shoulders to your ears and then roll them back like this. You want to open really your chest and you want to sit uh, very, very straight. Bring your open palms on either the knees or, or the thighs, thighs, the oberschenkel. All of us are most probably still a little bit in our minds, in our thought traffic. You had perhaps a very intense week, or you are excited, how will this Bhakti Bloom Festival come out? Will we maybe be swept away by a deluge of water? <laughs> so whatever it is that occupies your mind, uh, just come to the here and to the now, this, this moment. We make a very quick body scan to relax our body. Start with your feet. Feel the aliveness there. And then move your attention up to your knees and to your hip bone and relax. 
let go of any tension. Move your attention from the lower back to the middle of your back and to the upper back. Just relax. Remain incredibly aware as you bring your attention to your belly and your chest area and let go of any tension there. Shoulders and arms relax. The back of your head and the front of your face. Relax. Appreciate how totally relaxed you are. And now take in a deep breath and a deep out breath. Out Yes, very nice. And then just gently continue to breathe in, gentle, not by force. And some slow and long inhalations and also slow and long exhalations. Just remain aware of your in and outgoing breath as your mind settles into deeper states of inner calm. Very good. Now in your mind's eye Envision a cathedral, the image of a cathedral. Perhaps you like to think of the big cathedral in Cologne or anywhere. And there, I move inside and sit on the benches. Become that bench for a moment. You're just there. In your mind's eye, look around. There's the chandelier. For a moment, let your heart be that chandelier. And then move your attention even more up. There's the dome. For a moment, your head is the dome. We will now resonate on all the three levels the mantra ram bring that mantra to so that place where you are sitting on the bench, the lower part. Mm. Three times, please. I will one time chant alone.
to our heart area in the Cathedral of Sound, that's where the chandelier is. We can all chant together four times. to the dome of the Cathedral of Sound. It represents uh, the area around our skull. Five more times, Ram, and this time let the sound pervade our entire body and mind. And after the fifth time, I will give you a sign when that is. We will just sit a little bit and let the vibration or the effect of the Ram chanting uh, work a little bit in our body and our mind and then I will give you a sign when we wake, when we come out of this.
we will sit in silence afterwards. Let the experience sink in. And please do what is perhaps the most beneficial of all meditational practices. Just be. If thoughts should come, let them come and go like clouds, but just be there, the witness, the observer, just be. I request you to take your two hands and rub them together. And then place them on your eyes, like in palming. And then slowly move them away from your eyes. And look at the lines as if you see them for the first time. Thank you very much. I see those who could participate in the exercise fully. They, they don't want to come <laughs> out of this. Uh, in, in my ne new book, I pre present one, you know, it's like a verse which I found uh, on, on a wall of a monastery. I forgot if it was a Buddhistic monastery or where it was exactly, but all I know, I wrote it down. I said, uh, th th this is what it says. Stop. Stop. Where are you running? Everything you look for is inside. If you keep on running outside, you might miss it all. <laughs> so this uh, meditation is a means, uh, uh, meditation on, s and the bhakti does, the bhakti yogis will say, meditation on sound is even much more effective um, uh, to bring us to the transformational journey which brings, uh, which changes our life totally. Um, where we look at the end just very different and we have different values. But most important, uh, we have found a key that unlocks uh, these eternal treasures of our spiritual essence to us. No? And, uh, good. So in summary, I wanted to show you mm, the general power of sound to organize matter. We know vibration and sound is 
vibrating in different patterns, has this uh, capability. Uh, how did you like the example or, or the experiment of my friend with the two rice bowls? That was quite telling, isn't it? That was, oh my God. <laughs> uh, we talked about that and then we made a little uh, uh, shift. We went one step further. Uh, we did not just uh, study sound and vibrations. We went into those spiritual sounds, uh, which have that uh, extra power to unlock these inner spiritual dimensions where we then, then see everything on our own terms. Mm. The yogi says, uh, uh, in, in the heart, there is God. Le the bhakti yoga says, okay, now let me find him. <laughs> and this happens through the power of, of sound. I want to thank you very much. I, would l l I, I think there is next the next workshop. And we n those who wish to stay, please stay. Uh, mm, if you have any questions, uh, yes, yes, finished. Uh, I'm finished. <laughs> I will be outside uh, where this beautiful chandelier can be seen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, the next workshop is about human design with an expert. It's highly interesting. Oh, yeah, human design. <laughs>